Welcome back to the Friar Talk podcast and YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the Padres' most recent offensive struggles. And we are recording this on Thursday. So if by some magic, the Padres came out on Friday and their offense absolutely balled out, you will know that we are recording this before that happened. But up to this point, Padres are coming off of being swept by the Rockies. Offense has been really bad. Um, it wasn't terrible against the Rockies, but you know, over, over the course of the season, they have not been able to get it done. Um, they are not able to have these comeback wins that we've seen in the past. Um, really hoping that this stuff turns around, but I kind of have an idea for for why this has been the case, and I'll let you guys respond and kind of let me know what you think. But we've seen that what the Padres' approach has been under Jace Tingler um, and how it kind of has, has changed since past Padres teams where they are trying to be incredibly patient at the plate. And you just look at, you know, you just go through the list of the guys that are, are hitting in the lineup every day and you look at their OPSs and you go, hey, this lineup should be doing really well. I think it was everyone that's in the starting lineup has an OPS over 750 outside of Tommy Pham and Eric Cosmer. And to be completely honest, those guys have, they haven't been an offensive liability, right? Like we've seen what they're able to do. Hosmer is a guy that is still hitting for a pretty high average able to drive in a lot of guys with base hits where Tommy Pham has been a really good table setter. If he's hitting lead off, he's walking a lot, getting on base a lot, right? Now the problem is that they're not generating runs and guys are getting left on base. And the reason why I think this is happening is because the, the strategy that the Potters are trying to implement with their lineup is that you are going to bat around a lot and you're going to have those big innings where guys are on base and guys get in hit, you know, have multiple hits in a row. The problem has been, is that whoever's slumping in the lineup seems to consistently be the guy that's, you know, whoever it is at the time, it's usually about three to four spots in the lineup at a given time where there is basically like an empty hole where guys are not hitting, right? Right now, what we've seen is that it's been Frazier, it's been Caratini lately, and it's been the pitcher spot. Now in 2020, there wasn't a pitcher spot. There was a DH that helped a lot because you didn't go down to the end of the lineup. And we've seen a lot recently where the Padres have guys in running in scoring position at the nine hole. A lot of the time it's Christian getting on base out of the eight hole. And then he, you know, gets a hit or a double or whatever it is. And he doesn't get driven in. The lineup does not have enough consistent hitters to be happy, like going at that, you know, using the same approach. Um, I just think it's just, it's the approach is right now is just, we're going to leave guys on base over and over and over again. And when it's time for whoever's struggling, say that's Frazier, say that's Caratini, say that's the pitcher spot, that's going to be the guy that's up at the plate when the guys are on, and it has not been working. Now, earlier in the year, and credit to both these guys because they have they've not been doing this lately, but Will Myers and Eric Hosmer were struggling, and didn't it seem like every single time they would come up, the lineup would be like, oh, yep, everyone's on base for you guys, and then they both strike out and the inning ends. Well, that was when Fam was hitting earlier in the lineup. Now they've moved Fam to to fifth a bunch, and now he's the guy that's doing that. So it seems like there's always a guy that's struggling, always a guy that's not being utilized in the right spot. There's no lineup consistency, and the lineup almost just like generates a bunch of base runners, and then they get left on and stranded so often. Um, so I think that this strategy, it can work. It's a very good strategy when you have a complete lineup, but the Padres have shown that they do not have a consistent or a complete lineup right now. And I think that ultimately this strategy of, you know, trying to get a lot of guys on base is not working. Play small ball, play it different. And I just think that what we saw early on where guys were stealing, we're not seeing that aggressiveness on the bases anymore. And, you know, I'm pretty much ranting about the lineup right now. So I'll let you guys go, but it's just, it's been really frustrating to see. And you just see all these guys getting left on base. So Isaac, how do you feel about this lineup? Do you think I'm making some fair points? And, and what do you think about this Padres approach potentially being a lot of the problem? Well, I'll start with the lineup. Uh, if anyone in the comments or either of you guys can give me a legitimate argument, a legitimate reason as to why Adam Frazier should be leading off, I'd love to hear it. Um, do I think he's going to bounce back eventually in the season? Yes, because, you know, he was having a very successful season earlier in the year. Um, however, last year, traded for a guy who was also having good success in his first 20, 30 games, whatever it was before the deadline. And he ended up being trash. Um, I don't think Frazier will end up being trash. I still think he's going to be a valuable piece for this team. But, you know, you can only go based off right now. And right now, he's not the guy that you want leading off. Um, I've talked about it before. I've talked about it on Twitter. I talked about it on the live stream yesterday. Um, if there's a guy that should be leading off right now, especially against righties, definitely should be Trent Grisham. If it's against a lefty, it should be Tommy Pham. 
Um, I, I think it's that simple. You look at Tommy Pham's on base percentage uh, when he's leading off. It's in the three, what is it, 330s, 340s, maybe a little higher, I believe. So I think it's like 350, 360. It was really high last time we checked. And and I don't think there's a reason they should be taking him out of that spot if he's doing that well. Um, you look at Frazier. Guy's a ground ball machine. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but if you look at his recent launch angle, it, it, the launch angle from when he was in Pittsburgh went like this, went back up, and since he was been in San Diego, just a, like a roller coaster. Um, so I don't think there's a legitimate argument to have him in the uh, have batting that high in the lineup right now, especially because you talk about you know wanting to give Fernando consistent RBI opportunities. There's nobody better in the lineup to give him that than Tommy Pham or Trent Grisham. You went. You completely shifted away, you know, for whoever makes the lineup, they completely shifted away from what was working earlier in the year. Because what was working was either Famer Grisham at the top, Tati second, Cronenworth third, Machado fourth, Hosmer fifth. It was working. Like they were scoring a bunch of runs, winning a lot of ball games, and that was the that was their that was their best lineup, in my opinion. Um now, now you go away from that and you're starting to see a bunch of struggles. The only guy I wouldn't have hitting above Frazier right now is Victor Caratini. Because you look at the guys from the rest of the lineup, uh, Tommy Pham, he's getting on a bunch, hit the, hit the MLP spur this home run this year. Trent Grisham, is having, he's having quite a bit of success, at least getting on base the past 15, 30 games. Um, Fernando, MVP-type season. Machado's gotten a little bit of a cold streak, but come on, you know, he was doing really good before that. Jake Cronenworth, I believe, should have been the starting all-star second baseman. Obviously, the other guy is on our team, but he's not doing very well. Will Myers, Chase brought it up, last 30 games, hitting around two. 282 with a really high slugging percentage. Um, Hosmer is holding his own right now. Everyone in this lineup is holding their own right now. There's just a couple guys that are holding us back. Um, but uh, I'm going to let Chase talk about the lineup, and then when we come back around, I, I kind of want to talk about their plate approach as well. I will give Tingler credit on one thing. Do you know what guy we haven't seen in the lineup at all in, like, the past week or two? Jake Marisnik. He's been nowhere to be. I even forgot he was on the team. I started looking at the rock, which is a great thing. Does that mean we shouldn't have traded for him? But probably he hasn't touched the field in I don't know how long. But having guys like Frazier who are struggling and grounding out a lot, you really have to take him down from that top spot. I know you want him to be that leadoff guy, but you got to move him down to eight until he starts hitting. Or you can move him down to nine and put the pitcher eight. That's what I always am in favor of doing. But you move Fan back up to first when a lefty starting, or you move Grish up to first when a righty starting. Fan's hitting second. You got Kenworth, Tatis, and Machado three, four, five. Hosmer and then Myers six and seven, and then however you want to fill out eight and nine. Or the only time I would move. That is you probably put Nola 6, Myers 7, and then Hosmer at 8. Just because I think Myers drives in a little more people than Hosmer. And, you know, I, I like Myers more than Hosmer. But when Caratini's catching, you have Frazier and Caratini hitting at the bottom of the lineup right now. Because that, that way you get people on for your guys. Because you, we all know that Tatis and Machado are going to be the RBI machines. Nola has been doing that a lot as of late. So I say he hits, you know, six. Cronenworth has been doing that, and he also gets on base a lot. So you hit him three because he's a versatile hitter. He'll either get on base for Tatis or Machado, or he'll hit the people in front of him in. And that way you maximize the lineup. And, you know, six through eight can, or six through seven, six through eight, however you, the Padres decide to do it, would be really flexible for. Yeah, you know what? We have Hosmer and Myers hitting there, but they're not bad hitters, and they can still hit in the guys in front of us. They may not be as consistent as it, and that's why they're sitting lower in the lineup. You can't have somebody that has been grounding out as much as Frazier in the top five spots. You have to drop him down to eight because there's no reason for him to be hitting eight other than eight until he figures out why he's grounding out so much or fixes his launch angle because until then – you're just get wasting an out that could have been used on someone that's better in the one or two spot like Famer Grisham and gets on base for the other guys. You're just misusing the lineup at that point. I like a lot of the stuff you bring up. Um, one thing I will say is that 
it's kind of unlikely, I think, that we're going to see much of this moving forward unless they decide to bench Adam Frazier and have Tatis go back to short and then put Cronenworth at second. But there's not going to be much of both Tommy Pham and Will Myers in the lineup. Um, right now, I think you should ride the hot hand and use Will, and that's why I think that you you guys are right about having Grisham leading off. I would go for mine, and I'll say in this case, Tommy Pham is on the bench. I would go Grisham 1, Tatis 2, Cronenworth 3, Manny, uh, Manny 4, Nola 5, Hosmer 6, Will 7, and then 8 uh, would be Frazier. Um, so I'm a, I agree with you guys that he needs to be bumped down the lineup. Does that mean that he can't come back up? Of course he can come back up. I, and I've said it before, when he's on, I think he's a great three hitter. I think he can also do what Cronenworth does. And I think you could move Cronenworth to five and he'd be very valuable there. Um, but he's slumping right now. So you got to, you know, adjust the lineup in that cases. And I think when we talk about the, the consistency of the lineup, the problem isn't that like, okay, one of the problems is that you don't have guys hitting in the same spot every day, but it's also that there's not adjustments made. There's no adjustments made like accordingly to, how guys are hitting. Frazier is slumping. What's the response? Let's have him lead off. Why Why is that the thought process? Oh, you know, fam has been hitting really well when he leads off, and that's, you know, where he's, that's where he's best been in this lineup. Let's move him to fifth where there's a bunch of guys in scoring position. Like, that doesn't make any sense. The only thing that we've seen is that we've seen Jake Cronenworth and Manny Machado pretty much consistently at three and four, and that's been it. Noah's been at five too. Will's been at seven when he's in the lineup, but there's no consistency from a game to game basis. And there's no consistency in like where the guys are performing. If a guy's struggling, he should be moved down the lineup. You guys agree, right? Unless it's a Manny Machado or a guy that we've seen that's been very consistent. But if you have Tommy Pham in the lineup, there's no reason that he shouldn't be leading off because you have other capable outfielders that can either play over him if he's struggling or you're putting him him, him him in a lineup where he's going to struggle, where he's going to struggle to generate runs. And that's what we've seen out of him. He's been an amazing leadoff hitter. I have loved when Tommy Pham is let off. When he hits five, it is so brutal to watch because he comes up and there's two, three guys on. It feels like every time with two outs, and it's always an out. That's how I, that's how I feel when I watch the games. Um, but that's where I'm at on this team. Isaac, I'll let you get into the approaches a little bit because I did talk a lot about that. Um, but I'm definitely been really fr frustrated with the lineups because it just seems like the consistency is not there and they don't adjust when guys are slumping or when guys are hot. Like Will Myers, he gets benched and he's playing at cores and we know how much of a monster he is at cores. He should be in the lineup every day of that series. And when he was in, he was balling out. So, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the case was made there, but definitely been frustrating with these lineups. Um, but Isaac, you want to get into the approaches a little bit and chase you as well before we take off? I think it's fairly simple to pick well, pick apart that plate approach. Um, I don't know how many times lately we've seen guys averaging 10 to 12 pitches an inning against the Padres lately. I mean, I don't know. Uh, this Rocky series, I believe it was six, seven, and eight or nine. That was how many pitches were thrown in the first inning each time. Um, I don't know what happened from the offense last year and at the, at the beginning of the year where they were patient at the plate waiting for their pitch and waiting to get the pitch that they can drive. That, that just completely went away. And I completely understand if the other pitch is throwing, other pitch is throwing, you know, everything down the middle or something. But, like, Marquez went into the seventh inning with only 70 pitches. That's That that can't happen. Like, that, that, that's their ace. That guy was an all-star. You need to be able to get him out of the game early because that Rockies bullpen is one of the worst in baseball. As a matter of fact, the Diamondbacks and the Rockies bullpens, I believe, are among the worst in baseball, and their starters were on forever. They had a, a no-hitter, and I believe – I don't even know if the guy threw 100 pitches. I don't remember. I, I mean, he might have, but it, was, it had to be low hundreds. So, um, you know, that, that, that can't happen. That can't be happening. you got to be able to take some pitches at the plate, and if you're struggling especially, you need to be able to get to the bullpen early because that's that's going to be your, your recipe for success at the plate. Um, Fernando – swing away you know you're gonna do you you're 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 the mvp go ahead swing away jake same thing manny same thing but for the for the rest of the guys trent grisham already has a really solid approach but you know tommy fam as well hosmer take get get your pitch because as soon as soon as hosmer gets to 0-2 or 1-2 or two strikes in general they throw him a, a curveball inside inside low he's screwed you like it's a guarantee Will, 
He's been lately getting his pitch. You've been seeing the results out of him lately. That dude is mashing because he's starting to see the ball really well and he's starting to get his pitch. Um, Adam Frazier just seems like he's swinging at everything. It's it's a little frustrating, but this approach at the plate needs to be fixed because they're going away from what was working last year. They're going away from what was working earlier in the year, and they just they're just hacking. And uh, you know, when when you're when you're starting to face some of the worst bullpens in baseball, you need to be able to to capitalize on facing them. And you're you're going to be facing the Phillies. I don't know how good their bullpen is, but I know the Dodgers bullpen isn't very good right now. And if you're going to be facing top their top end guys, you need to be able to you know get whoever they they whoever they pitch out of the game early and that's by running up their pitch count. That has been the difference in like most of the series. Like the Diamondbacks game, the Snell versus Bumgarner. Snell was at 70 pitches by the end of the third inning. Bumgarner I think was at 45, maybe 50 at most. The only reason Bumgarner got pulled out was because they started hitting off of him. If not, he probably could have finished the game. I would say go seven innings and maybe around 90, 95 pitches. He was on that type of pace. Snell was out by the fifth inning because he was already at 96 pitches. Our pitchers can't go deep into the games because the hitters have a patient approach, and anytime there's a ball off the plate or there's, it's close, they take. Our guys will just swing away and hope that they hit it. Bumgarner threw a curveball to Hosmer like, five, ten inches off the plate, and Hosmer swung at it and missed and looked like a fool. Where other guys we probably would have taken that pitch for a ball. And I don't know how many times we've seen it. There's like, okay, cool, a 3-2 count or a 2-2 count. And uh, the guys swing at ball three and ball four instead of they swing at it and don't take the walk. And the other thing that might contribute to this is when guys are getting on base, they're not putting pressure on the pitcher. Before we would run wild, and you know the pitcher would have to worry about okay, is this guy taking off? That guy's going to be in scoring position now. Now this guy has a chance to hit him in with a single. They don't have that pressure anymore. The Padres aren't running like they used to. So now they're just really focusing on on the hitter, and we've seen it. It's not helping the Padres in any case, shape, or any shape or form, and they just kind of look lost. Um, you know, Tatis is back in the lineup. You have your heart and soul back in the lineup, and you're still losing games. So something's got to change. The lineup needs consistency. They need a better approach at the plate, and they need to start running on the bases again because when they were succeeding, they were playing aggressive baseball, but they were patient at the plate. Yeah, it does definitely seem like the like what was working last year was they were taking pitches for balls early on in the count, getting ahead of the count. Now it seems like they go up to the plate, watch two, two fastballs come down the middle, and then – start fouling off off speed and basically come from behind every single time. Uh, I think the, the league's kind of taking notice of like, all right, these guys are not swinging early ever in counts. So we're going to attack them and they attack them and then they hope for swing and misses and it's worked out really well for the opposing pitchers. Um, and that's why we've seen so many guys. It seems like it's five innings. Any, any bad lefty that comes in and pitches against the Padres, it seems like five innings into the game, the Padres will have one hit, no runs, and that'll be all they can show for. And the lefty has like 40 pitches thrown through five innings. That's what it honestly feels like. We've talked about Merrill Kelly, and we joke around about him that, you know, you you have him pitches up against the Padres every night. Dude's coming home with the Cy Young. He goes six, seven. And like, it's every lefty that's like that. I mean, the most recent case of that, a lefty in his, you know, first career start comes out, throws a no hitter. So, and like you said, Isaac, I don't even know if he was quite to 100, but if he was at 100, he was barely over 100 pitches. It was right around 100. So got to get the approaches better, got to get some lineup consistency, got to hit guys where, you know, if a guy's hot, he moves up the lineup. If a guy's cold, he moves down the lineup. It's, I feel like it's that simple. I feel like there's just no rhyme or reason around it, um, and the approaches have not been that great. Chase, do you have one thing to add before we take off? Yeah, uh, so I was going past the last – Three games and probably the on the only game that we won against the Diamondbacks against the Colorado Rockies, it went we had two walks, one walk and one walk. The game that we won eight to two, they had ten walks. And then you go back to the Arizona when we lost zero to seven, they had three walks. The game that we lost two to three, they had zero walks. And then the game we lost three to twelve. 
they had, let's see, one walk. They are not walking like they used to. They barely walk at all. They are striking out a lot more than they walk, and it's showing. All right. Well, that's going to do it. Hopefully the, you know, the approaches start improving. The lineups get more consistent. They start making some more sense. I think that can go a long way for this team, uh, but we'll see how it goes. If you guys disagree, you guys think, you know, we're not bringing up fair points about the lineup. Please let us know. Um, if you agree, you, you know, you think that we're right on stuff, let us know about that too, but really want to get, you know, some, some conversation about this stuff. Cause it is, it is really frustrating because it definitely feels like the run output is not where it should be, especially when you look at, the, the splits of this offense and, you know, the slash lines of these guys, it seems like they should be generating a lot more runs, um, but we'll see how that goes. And hopefully, you know, like I said, this is coming out on Saturday. Hopefully Friday they came out and they, you know, walked 10 times and went off, um, but we'll see how that goes. And we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.